Well, apparently there's only room for one Siegel in the Boston radio market because a few short months after Paris Alston and Jeremy Siegel launched the new morning edition here on 89.7 GBH Radio, <laughs> Matt Siegel, better known to you as Maddie in the Morning, announced his retirement after 41 years at the helm of KISS 108's popular morning show. Siegel says he plans to focus on family and his new life as a mediocre golfer. But look at that's a major change for the Boston radio landscape and listeners who have reliably tuned into the show for decades. And joining me to discuss this is another iconic Boston radio personality, Massachusetts Broadcasters Hall of Famer, Oedipus, who had his own cult and cult-like following for decades on WBCN and now hosts the Oedipus Project website. Oedipus, what was your reaction when Maddie finally gave up the ghost and retired earlier this week? It's the end of an era, and not just Maddie Siegel's era. It's the end of the great radio personality on a music station in Boston. We have no more. He, he started pre-internet and continued from last century into this century. <laughs> and it's over. There are no more great music radio personalities on Boston radio. We have, we have radio personalities, but they're on talk, like Jim and Marjorie, for instance, or they're on sports, but music, it's all over. It's, it's amazing to me, you know, my daughter is 21 now and she didn't really even start listening to the radio until she was 16 and she was just, just because we were in the car, and she was just appalled by how many commercials there were and how much talking there was. So she gets to, you know, curate her own music like everyone else does on Apple Playlist or Spotify. And then for personalities, she gets them from YouTube or Instagram or TikTok. And it seems like such a, 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 a separation of music and personality as you're talking about, which I never thought was po possible. Is, what does this mean? Is this good for music that it's kind of on its own and personalities over here? Or do you think we'll see a swing back someday? Well, it's great for music. For radio, it's not good at all. I mean, Maddie was successful because he was not only a great personality, he was funny, he was charming, he was your buddy. You got to know Maddie and you felt a, a kinship with him. We don't cultivate that talent any longer in radio. It's simply not done. It all changed with the Radio Communications Acts in 1996 when uh, companies could own more than one station. And they kept buying stations and buying stations. So they didn't cultivate and train the talent for the next morning show. I would imagine in the future, KISS 108 will have a syndicated morning show, probably out of New York, maybe out of LA. They just don't train people any longer overnights to be great DJs and then to take over the mornings. It's no longer happening. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to explain to folks who may not know, but, you, you know, you would start as an intern, as I did, and then you would work the overnight shift or a weekend shift, and then if you were able to do that, you might move on to be a producer or work with a daytime personality, and then maybe if you were lucky, you'd, you'd get your own shift, and it would take off or not from there, but everybody of a certain generation had their favorites that they listened to. Um, you know, the other challenge, I, I, I've been saying to folks who've asked me that Maddie has been exactly the same since the day I met him, you know, in 1982. <laughs> there, it's not like he was a cranky old man. He was a cranky young man, and then he became a cranky old man. Um, do you think the dynamic of where we are with uh, immediate response and, you know, everyone's got a broadcast station on Twitter now, right? You have an opinion, you can just blast it out there. Do you think it made it more difficult for Maddie to be Maddie in the way that he was? Or do you think maybe he should have made an effort, I know he wouldn't be able to, but to change a little bit, to adapt to the current uh, flow of how people react to you? Well, Maddie was Maddie. And he continued on Kiss What for 41 years and in radio for 45. He was at BCN for a while. And then he went off to television. <laughs> he tried to make him a television. Uh, <laughs> and then he just found his perfect, perfect spot at KISS 108. And he became a legend. And he is a legend. But those days are over. You can no longer work at a college radio station and then hope to be hired, like you said, overnight or part-time at a radio station and then uh, develop your talent. And then suddenly they'll say, hey, do you want to do morning drive? 
It's just not going to happen anymore. Not on not on music radio anymore. So what about radio? So let's so 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 Maddie's going to go on and continue to golf. I, I imagine we might see maybe a podcast or something for Maddie. He'll probably continue to do some <laughs> of his Wilbur Theater events because he loves to work. I mean, he's 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 a workhorse and and he's dedicated to it. Um, are are we just going to end up with um, radio that all sounds the same from market to market, from place to place? And what's the impact? How how are audiences? Going to, how are our regions going to have our own distinct personality if radio sa- sounds the same in Atlanta as it does in Boston? Well, it does. It sounds exactly the same. If you drive across country, you'll hear the same radio personalities, you hear the same songs on music radio over and over again. The personalities I mentioned are now on talk radio or sports radio. You don't hear it on music radio anymore. These companies control it. iHeart owns over a thousand radio stations. So it's just cost effective to have certain DJs just voice track and just pretend that they're in Atlanta or in Boston or New York or Chicago. Was there anybody, is, is there anybody like Maddie across the country? I know that there have been some, some long running um, music DJs and personalities, but uh, he's, he is a bit of a, a, of a major legend in his longevity at one station in one morning show. There are some major personalities across the country, like Ryan Seacrest, for instance. However, what's great about Maddie is he was Boston. He was ours. He knew about Boston. He knew the streets. He knew how to pronounce the names of the cities. He knew all the players, and he had all the players on his radio station. I mean, he was just a terrific, terrific broadcaster. He was quick. He was funny, and he's going to be missed. But as I mentioned, this is it. It's over. We don't have that anymore, and they're not, it's not going to happen. The only hope that we have, you and I, Sue, <laughs> is that eventually one of these radio stations will just not be generating the revenue, and once again, they'll let the inmates take over the asylum and run with it, just like they did with WBCN in the days of 1968. I mean, these people, they just had a passion for music, they had a passion for the culture, and they created a great, great radio station in 1968. And it lasted until 2009 when, once again, the suits decided, eh, we don't want to deal with this anymore. And music, we can just switch it all up and put a nice sports station on, which they did. And it's a great sports station, but we don't have that great music station, that culturally um, attractive station that, uh, that, that, is, that is Boston. Now, as you mentioned, it's all on the internet. You find it on the internet. It's all, it's so, there's only niches here and niches there and niches there, but. Do, do you think there's going to be a, a demand for it? I mean, this, this is the, 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 the thing that I think about on a regular basis is how small the world has become in that uh, you can access on, almost any type of culture uh, from your couch, right? You can, if you want to listen to music in Switzerland, you can hear that. If you want to listen to a radio station in Ethiopia, you can almost access that. And it has it made our world tiny, which is great and wonderful for sharing ideas. But when it comes to some cultural identity, which has its good and bad sides, but when it comes to being proud from being from somewhere and having your culture, you know, besides sports teams, what are our touchstones that help us identify? You know, you could go on a trip somewhere and ma- mention Oedipus or mention Maddie Siegel and people or mention, you know, Charles and people know immediately you're from, you're from Boston. What, what's going to be our cultural, artistic definition for ourselves now? Besides sports, it's politics. <laughs> we know the players in politics. You know, Elizabeth Warren, she's known across the country. She's known around the world. That's not as and much fun, though. I mean, that, 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 that's not nearly not as, as much, much fun. fun. I mean, it's fun for but, me, but, it, you know, it isn't a great way to open a conversation at a tiki bar somewhere. Well, the Internet changed it all, and especially with music. It, now uh, the means of distribution have dissolved. You, don't know, well, you no longer have to be on a major record label to have your music heard. So there's lots of opportunities to share your music across the world, and you can generate a fan base and a following. However... There's going to be very few superstars anymore. Very few people that can sell millions and millions and millions of records or have billions of streams. There are some. There are some. But it's not like it used to be where uh, there was 
there was an artist that you could name and everybody knew that artist. I think the last artist everybody knows would be Adele. Most people know who Adele is, mm -hmm. but does everybody know who Doja Cat is? Does everybody know The Weeknd? Uh, we all know you too. We all know Rolling Stones, but think of all the new popular artists that many people have never heard of. So are, and they're terrific. Are, are you taking a, is this a realistic view? Is this a pessimistic view? Is this an optimistic view? I mean, are you just sort of, uh, you know, looking out and saying, this is how it is and we're going to have to deal with it? Or are you hoping that it turns into something um, a bit more magical than it feels like right now? This is the way it is. <laughs> and it's not going to change. It's on, there, there are 60,000 songs uploaded on Spotify every day. Every day, think about that. It's just, we're gonna have more and more music and more and more niches. And radio's in big trouble in terms of music radio because you can find this music everywhere. And at the top, there's no more requests. As soon as you hear a song anywhere, you can pull it right up on your, on your phone. Furthermore, uh, people's attentions, they might be playing video games, they might be watching a movie, they might be on their phones, they could be watching a series. So radio's in for a very difficult time because they have commercials. We're talking commercial radio here, of course. Yep. Um, because people aren't gonna sit through that anymore unless there's a major personality and the station is so dynamic, so exciting that you don't mind sitting through it at all. You didn't mind sitting through it because you wanna hear what Maddie had to say. You wanna hear what Charles had to say. So you waded through the commercials and sometimes the commercials were fun. We're talking about Charles Lack Lacordaire, great. of course, and Maddie and Charles used to actually call each other from the radio stations from BCN and KISS when they were on together. I'm, my mind's a little blown when I think about if we could go back in time uh, and as Maddie Siegel walked into BCN to, to start his, his radio career, we said to young Matt Siegel in the lobby, you know, in 41 years, you're, you're going to retire and it's going to be the end of an era. <laughs> You are going to be on your <laughs> tall yet slim shoulders. You are going to be carrying personality radio uh, off into the distance. Um, do, do you think Maddie, have you talked to him? And do, do you think that he I haven't understands? seen Maddie in a long time. I wish he'd uh, contact me and take me golfing. You can <laughs> beat really him. Apparently you can beat him. <laughs> so you've been golfing longer than he has. I think that you'll show him. Yeah, and and I'm, I'm certain that I'm not quite as good as he is. I know I'm not, but... Um, I mean, do you think that this that this is shocking to him that people are looking at this as an end of an era and it's not just Matt retiring? I think he's probably overwhelmed with the with the outpouring of love and what he's meant to the city. There's no doubt about that. I'm certain he's affected by that. But it has to end sometime. And I'm glad he walked away instead of just, I'm glad this is not a memorial. <laughs> Although he did ask me to give his eulogy, so I'm I'm ready to do that. I don't know if he remembers, but maybe he can. Uh, he'll he'll make this. Well, Oedipus, I appreciate seeing you. I appreciate your wisdom on this, and uh, I look forward to, to to spending more time with you in the future. Sometimes in uh, IRL, as the kids say. We've had some good times, Sue, and we're going to have more. <laughs> All right, I, I hope so. <laughs> That'll be another show. We'll do another, you know, Eddie and Sue, Susie, tell, tell the real tales. All right, thanks so much for joining me, Oedipus. You're welcome.